when you're playing with somebody else, uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned you play guitar, you sang, you're, you're playing the harmonica, but I'm sure there's many opportunities through the years that you've backed a vocalist. Um, what's your approach to accompaniment playing? Kind of the, some of the do's and don'ts for the students of, of how to do well in that, uh, that uh, servant role. Right, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, here's, here's what I've learned from you know, different musicians, people I've played with, uh, being in bands and playing in the studio, playing demo tracks and uh, reacting with other people. And the main thing is uh, whoever's got the lead, stay out of their way. If you can enhance it, uh, uh, try to add something. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if you don't play at all, uh, in my case, if I don't play at all, it's probably a song that doesn't need me, or a part of the song that doesn't need me. But for, uh, for playing, and what I've learned from other people is, first of all, there's things that really determine the rhythm of a song, like for playing backup. If you're gonna play rhythmically chords, uh, first of all, the bass guitar and the bass drum, you're gonna hit on one and three the first and third beat of the measure. The snare is going to hit on the second and fourth beat of that measure. Well, uh, the bass and drum, uh, they pretty well got that first and third beat established. That snare uh, just comes in to let you know where that second and fourth beat are, but they, they're critical. But uh, so for playing back up, if it's just a boom chick country song or a real fast bluegrass song, mm -hmm. uh, playing in the cross, playing rhythm, all your notes are right under those first four holes. And so, uh, now that song is a, what they call public domain mm -hmm. melody. Okay. Uh, Wild Side of Life, Great Speckled Bird. I'm thinking tonight of my blue eyes. I didn't know God had made honky tonk angels. Well, that's a good song to demonstrate. So uh, I'll kind of play it where, where the rhythm would come in. You'll feel the second and the fourth okay. beats, but. So you heard that. Now the one, the one, the one chord, or in this case C harmonica crossing G. Mm -hmm. The G is one, two, three, draw. Now there's a double clutch there because you you you're, you're drawing right on the beat. Mm -hmm. Then you hit that first beat on that chord change. It went to C, and you mm -hmm. got a blow. So your routine of mm cha mm cha it mm -hmm. changes, and then for your D chord uh, or your five chord, that's holds one and hold four, which are D notes. D mm -hmm. notes are in the D chord, mm -hmm. so uh, you can't play any other notes that would really match the rhythm. But but you can play one and four together. And then um, a lot of times, if you're not just too heavy on pronouncing a note, and if it's not just totally uh, critically important that that chord has to be a perfect D, mm -hmm. just, you know, just kinda, it's kind of like a guitar, muted guitar strum, mm -hmm. where it just kind of keeps the beat, you know where the beat is. You could, you could just lightly play your, uh, draw notes mm -hmm. uh, without, you know, making it, it a public issue, <laughs> yeah. but it, uh, it would be there for a beat. Got it. It's more of a and, percussive element instead yeah. of a melodic element. Now, if you want to keep your breathing totally, 
your try this fast, especially on bluegrass tunes where it really gets fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you, your draw again would be one, two, three. Well, you can suck on hole two on a C harmonica. That's a G note. So uh, that would be your C E G for your C. That G note is in a C chord. So well, you suck it. I was blowing on hole three. And your D, either one or four. And you're not hearing the bass, but I guess I could slap my knee. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> I can play the bass for you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, where's my, you see harp there? Yeah. So, one, two, three. Nine. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I'll play the root um, fifth type of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to go like a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. One, Just four, two, one, four, five. Okay, one, two, three. Oh. <laughs> so that's that's really, uh, I mean, you're, it's all a sync thing, and uh -huh. it's all, and a good, uh, one thing I later learned too was uh, I started calling your nose the great ventilator, <laughs> yeah. and uh, in that process, if you just start noticing or even feeling what's coming across your mm -hmm. top finger, whatever mm -hmm. finger, you got to if, if you'll think, okay, blow through your nose while you're not playing that draw note because mm -hmm. that's where you get your air for the next note mm -hmm. and it becomes kind of an automatic pilot thing. Anything you do a lot, you just it's just an automatic thing. So you feel your nose blowing on your fingers. Mm -hmm. A lot of beginning students that I teach, uh, I, if I see them pumping their shoulders, mm -hmm. I know they're trying to do everything through their lungs. And I, I tell them, you know, make it as natural as breathing and make it as natural like you're talking. That's one of the first lessons that uh, I try to get across is uh, make it as natural as breathing mm -hmm. and make it as natural as talking and make your instrument talk. And so that seems to help those because, you know, first time you put a harmonic in your mouth, Hmm. You know, people have a tendency to blow. Right. You show them, well, here's what you can do by sucking. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I can take little kids. Um, I have a, I go out on the road a lot and I do fairs, cowboy symposiums, uh, special events, and I sell musical merchandise out of my booth. If I can take a youngin and have him playing something simple within two minutes, uh, the parents get excited. They want the young to have a harmonica. They just videotape me giving them a lesson in two minutes, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a train sound or anything that I do teach along with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's pretty exciting. But that's the first thing that I, you have to get them the breathing right. And, and you want them to, to suck while, and their tendency is to blow. Mm -hmm. And so I say, okay, we're going to get ready to Gonna get ready to play, and here's what you do: <sighs> breathe out. Now they're ready to suck. I mean, they can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah. Then you start playing. Mm. But I tell you, um, a lot of teaching I do is uh, for beginners, mm. uh, and so you learn these things as you go along, and you got to make it as simple as they possibly can. And if they can just pick up something within the first minute or two. Uh, boy, that's great feedback, and then they're motivated, mm -hmm. and then from there, uh, you you got something to build on. Great, and you're so you to make sure it's clear for all the students. You're exhaling on beats one and three. It becomes a rhythmic placeholder. The right. nose closes as mm -hmm. you do your inhale for your beats two and four. Your backbeat. Right. Great. 